On the evening before his suffering in Gethsemane and death on the cross, the Savior met with his disciples for the Last Supper. He said to them, In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Before the sun set the following day, Jesus had suffered and had died on the cross for our sins. I wonder how the lonely and faithful women and men who followed him must have felt in Jerusalem as the sun set and darkness and fear encompassed them. Like these ancient disciples nearly 2,000 years ago, many of you may also feel lonely from time to time. I've experienced this loneliness since the death of my precious wife, Barbara, over two and a half years ago. I know what it is to be surrounded by family members, friends, and associates, but still feel lonely because the love of my life is no longer here beside me. The COVID-19 pan pandemic has highlighted this sense of isolation and loneliness for many. Nevertheless, despite the challenges we face in life, like the first Easter morning, we can awake to a new life in Christ with new and marvelous possibilities and new realities as we turn to the Lord for hope and belonging. I personally feel the pain of those who lack a sense of belonging. As I watch news from time to time in the world, I see many who seem to be experiencing this loneliness. I think that for many is because they may not know that they are loved by Heavenly Father and that we all belong to His eternal family. Believing that God loves us and that we are His children is comforting and assuring. I speak of hope in Christ, not as wishful thinking. Instead, I speak of hope as an expectation that will be realized. Such hope is essential to overcoming adversity, fostering spiritual resilience and strength, and coming to know that we are loved by our eternal Father and that we are His children who belong to His family. When we have hope in Christ, we come to know that as we need to make and keep sacred covenants, our fondest desires and dreams can be fulfilled through Him. Brothers and sisters, more than half of the adults in the church today are widowed, divorced, or have not yet married. Some wonder about their opportunities and place in God's plan and in the church. We should understand that eternal life is not simply a question of current marital status, but of discipleship and being valiant in the testimony of Jesus. The hope of all who are single 
is the same as for all members of the Lord's restored church. Access to the grace of Christ through obedience to the laws and ordinances of the gospel. May I suggest that there are some important principles we need to understand. First, scriptures and Latter-day Prophets confirm that everyone who is faithful in keeping covenants will have the opportunity for exaltation. President Russell M. Nelson taught, in the Lord's own way and time, no blessing will be withheld from His faithful saints. The Lord will, be ju will judge and reward each individual according to heartfelt desire as well as deed. Second, precise time and manner in which the blessings of exaltation are bestowed, to be bestowed have not yet been revealed, but they are nonetheless assured. President Dallin H. Oaks explained that some of the circumstances of mortality will be set right in the millennium, which is the time for fulfilling all that is incomplete in the great plan of happiness for all of our Father's worthy children. Third, waiting upon the Lord implies continued obedience and spiritual progress towards Him. Waiting upon the Lord does not imply biding one's time. You should never feel like you are in the waiting room. Waiting upon the Lord implies action. I have learned over the years that our hope in Christ increases when we serve others. Serving as Jesus served, we naturally increase our hope in Him. Fourth, God offers eternal life to all His children, all those who accept the Savior's gift of repentance and live His commandments will receive eternal life even though they do not attain to all the characteristics and perfections in mortality. Those who repent will experience the Lord's readiness to forgive as he is assured. Yea, as often as my people repent, will I forgive them their trespasses against me. Fifth, our confidence in these assurances is rooted in our faith in Jesus Christ, by whose grace all things pertaining to mortality are set right. All promised blessings are made possible through Him, who by His atonement descended below all things and has overcome the world. He hath sat down on the right hand of God, the claim of the Father, His rights of mercy, which He hath upon the children of men, wherefore He advocateth the cause of the children of men. In the end, the sights, the saints shall be filled with His glory and receive their inheritance as joint heirs with Christ.
Our desire is that these principles will help all have increased hope in Christ and feel the sense of belonging. Never forget that you are a child of God, our eternal Father, now and forever. He loves you. And the church wants and needs you. Yes, we need you. We need your voices, talents, skills, goodness, and righteousness. What do we hope God will provide in response to our spiritual longing? Even as we speak, we are waging an all-hands-on-deck war with COVID-19, a solemn reminder that a virus a thousand times smaller than a grain of sand can bring entire populations and global economies to their knees. When we have conquered this, and we will, may we be equally committed to freeing the world from the virus of hunger and freeing neighborhoods and nations from the virus of poverty. May we hope for schools where students are taught, not terrified they will be shot, and for the gift of personal dignity for every child of God, unmarred by any form of racial, ethnic, or religious prejudice. Undergirding all of this is our relentless hope for greater devotion to the two greatest of all commandments, to love God by keeping His counsel, and to love our neighbors by showing kindness and compassion, patience and forgiveness. We all need to believe that what we desire in righteousness can someday, some way, somehow yet be ours. Indeed, if we finally lose hope, we lose our last sustaining possession it was over the very gate of hell that Dante wrote a warning to all those traveling through his Divina Commedia. Abandon all hope, he said, ye who enter here. Truly, when hope is gone, what we have left is the flame of the inferno raging on every side. We can hope, we should hope, even when facing the most insurmountable odds. So, when our backs are to the wall, and as the hymn says, other helpers fail and comforts flee, among our most indispensable virtues will be this precious gift of hope linked inextricably to our faith in God and our charity to others. I testify that the future is going to be as miracle-filled and bountifully blessed as the past has been. We have every reason to hope for blessings even greater than those we've already received.